Good afternoon, radio audience, and again, as always, I want to thank you for tuning in to the Unadulterated Truth Broadcast, a broadcast that is a live Bible question and answer program, where you, the radio listeners, at any point in time during this half-hour broadcast, the opportunity is afforded to you to pick up your telephones, dial the number 281-837-2222. If you have any Bible questions or comments you'd like to make, and we'll give you book, chapter, verse for all of your Bible questions, and we'd love to listen to your comments as well. I want to deal with the subject this afternoon, exposing fake miracles with the scriptures. Amen. Exposing fake miracles with uh, the scripture. Paul writes, for such are false apostles, deceitful workers, transforming themselves into the apostles of Christ. And no marvel, for Satan himself is transformed into an angel of light. Therefore, it is no great thing if his ministers also be transformed as ministers of righteousness, whose end shall be according, he says, to their words. Okay, and so I read Second Corinthians 11, and I'll lay a quick foundation in Brother Javier. You'll come to the mic after we do this, and he'll, he'll uh, elaborate more on the subject. Now, I want to make sure that uh, we're clear on the subject that we're dealing with. We're dealing with uh, some prominent things that we see in today's world where you have uh, various people with these healing sessions. Uh, these people that are this oneness group, especially the apostolics. Uh, I call them the, they're the oneness group in that they believe that Jesus is the Father, uh, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And this is a, a conglomeration of people as well that they have these healing sessions and believe that there are apostles today, hence apostolic faith, that are around and are able to perform miracles today. You have the snake oil uh, group, the snake bite groups, uh, uh, the Peter Popoffs, the holy water group uh, that many of you have been duped into sending your monies to, believing if you would just get your hand on some of this, this holy oil and this water, that uh, you would in fact uh, be healed and made whole. And so there are various different types of movements, healing, fake miracle movements that are out there that we want to expose uh, by uh, the scriptures, the word of God. Now let's be clear. Let's go to Mark 16 real quickly. Now the Bible does talk about miracles. By no means are we on this program advocating that there's never been a time where people could do miracles. We would be, we would be uh, uh, incapable Bible students to uh, even allow such foolishness to come out of our mouth uh, that there wasn't a time that miracles uh, were in place and people did miracles. Jesus, after his ascension from the grave and just before his ascension into heaven, he tells his apostles in verse number 15 of Mark 16, he said unto them, Go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. He that believes and is baptized shall be saved, but he that believeth not, he says, shall be damned. And these signs shall follow them that believe. Now he's talking to the apostles, the eleven at this time, because by now Judas has committed suicide. He says, In my name they shall cast out devils, they shall speak with new tongues, they shall take up serpents. If they drink any deadly thing, it shall not hurt them. They shall lay hands on the sick, and get this, and they, not might, they shall recover. And so this was uh, words of Jesus given to the apostles uh, to uh, let them know that once he ascended into heaven that he, were gonna, he was going to have disciples, apostles, people who would be able to perform miracles. But I want you to get this. The purpose of the miracle and the gifts was not to heal everybody sick and not to uh, give everybody who was blind sight. It was for the purpose of pointing to uh, get them to understand that Jesus is exactly who he says he was. To establish Jesus' identity. I want to make sure you get that. Was the purpose of the miracles. You've got to get that in your spirit. It was not for the purpose of everybody being healed of their sickness, everybody blind having their sight, because if that was the case, then I'm going to tell you something. They truly failed, and God's word truly failed, but it did not fail. God's word is true because it was never the design for miracles to heal everybody and cause everybody blind uh, to see. Now go to Matthew chapter 9 real quickly. Matthew chapter 9. I'm going to prove this because Jesus says the same thing. You know the story here of a man who is paralytic, and he has four of his friends that are going to bring, uh, bring this individual to Jesus. Now, I want you to notice what Jesus 
does what Jesus does first when he sees this individual in Mark, uh, Matthew rather, chapter 9. Matthew chapter 9 and verse number 2. And behold, they brought to him a man. Now know that he was sick of the palsy, lying on the bed. And Jesus, seeing their faith, said unto the sick of the palsy, Son, be of good cheer, your sins be forgiven you. Now, I want to I make sure I want to deal with that because notice, when they brought this man who was physically sick to Jesus, notice what Jesus was primarily concerned about. Not his physical well-being, not his physical healing. Jesus was concerned about his spiritual well-being. He deals with the spiritual first. You get that, Ray Alyssa? This is why we read our answer. Now, in verse 3, and behold, certain of the scribes said within themselves, this man blasphemeth. Jesus, knowing their thoughts, said, what for think ye evil in your hearts? For whether it's easy to say, your sins be forgiven, or to say, arise and walk. Now, get this. This is why he's going to have this man get up and walk. But that you may know that the Son of Man had power on earth to forgive sins. Then he said to the sick of the palsy, arise, take up your bed, and go to your house. You see that? The purpose of the miracle. Jesus said, I'm going to raise this guy up. But the reason I'm going to allow this miracle to take place is so that you will be able to identify that I am who I said I am, that I have come to forgive sins, that I am the Messiah, okay? And so you need to get that in your spirit. So this is how we know there. Now, what miracle, let me say this, what miracle do we need anybody to be able to do today that we need to see in order to prove that Jesus is the Son of God? 281 837 those of you who are out there professing the apostolic faith, that you have miracle workers, that you're an apostle, the Geno Jennings, uh, the Oral Roberts groups, let me call your name. All you who, you're Benny Hens, I believe he's kind of repenting in some state, form, or fashion, but he needs to come all the way. What is your purpose today in doing a miracle? Now, again, I want to establish one more thing because I know Brother Javier has a lot he can add to this. Let me tell you what else these fake miracle workers do today that goes against the Scripture. The Benny Hens and the Oral Roberts and, and the list is endless. You know what they do? They charge money uh, when you go to their sessions mm -hmm. in order to be a part of their fake healing services, mm -hmm. which is something Jesus said not to do. Go to Matthew chapter 10. Matthew chapter 10. This is how you know they're fake. 281-837-2222. And I'm going to deal with this part, oh, it's just because y'all don't believe. I'm going I'm to say something in just a few minutes on you out there talking about, see, it's just their faith, you know, is why they can't be healed. They just simply, they just simply don't believe. But let me deal with their, their charging you monies uh, to enter into their miracle services. Now, look what Jesus says to, to the 12 that he's going to send out, who he did give powers uh, and miraculous gifts to be able to raise the dead to. Now notice what Jesus tells them in Matthew 10, 8. He told them, I want you to, I want you to heal the sick, cleanse the lepers, raise the dead, which none of them do today, cast out devils. Now look what he says. Freely you have received. Uh-oh. Mm -hmm. Freely give. Amen. Provide neither gold nor silver nor brass in your purses, nor script for your journey, neither two coats, neither shoes, nor yet stays, for the workman is worthy of his meat. Now, now Jesus said, you got these miracles. I want you to do them, but when you do them, I want you to freely give. How many of them are doing it for free? How many of them out there are doing it, so-called doing it? We know they're not, but how many of them are doing it for free? How many of you believe Peter Popoff really wants you to be here? Tell him just to send it to you without charging you a gift offering, a love offering, before he sends it in the mail. You know why he wants to charge? Because his God is mammon. Mm -hmm. And his, he's a minister, as we just read in 2 Corinthians 11, he is a minister of Satan. He is not an apostle, a worker of God, and neither is anybody today. And I want to, 281837 neither is anybody who claims to be an apostle today. They are liars. They are not workers of Christ. And if they don't repent, they will find themselves in a devil's hell. 281, I think I've said enough. I won't take up all the time, but we'll have Brother Javier to come to the mic. And uh, if I have some more time, I'm going to deal with those of you out there who talk about, well, it's just a lack of faith 
that individuals have, that's why they're not healed. 281-837-2222. Brother Javier Frias. Amen. God bless you, Brother Henry. Very important subject. We don't want the world or the saints to be deceived concerning this subject. We want to read the scriptures and exactly what happened in the history's time in the Bible. When we look at Acts chapter 2, when the apostles are gathered together on the day of Pentecost, in verse number 2 it says, There appeared unto them cloven tongues like as a fire and sat upon each of them. In verse number uh, 7 it says, And they were all amazed and marveled, saying one to another, Behold, are not all these which speak Galileans, and how hear we every man in our own tongue wherein we were born. And so he goes a list of the names, Parthians, Medes, Elamites, dwellers of Mesopotamia. So the key word that I want to look at is tongues where we were born. Key phrase, tongue where we were born. So when it comes to what they're speaking today on the television screen, that's not a language where anyone on earth is born. That is a gibberish. Some of these individuals are demon-possessed. They are giving you false promises and false hope. When we look at 1 Corinthians chapter 13, where it says that those things are going to be done away with, prophecy, new knowledge, tongue speaking. It says, verse 8, Charity never faileth, but whether there be prophecies, they shall fail. Where there be, it says, tongues, they shall cease. Where there be knowledge, it shall vanish away. For we know in part, and we prophesy in part. But when that which is perfect is come, then that which is in part shall be done away. When I was a child, I spake as a child, I understood as a child, I thought as a child, but when I became a man, I put away childish things. He says in verse 9, For we know in part and we prophesy in part. For those who say that that which is perfect has come, that which is part in part is going to be done away with, this is not talking about Jesus Christ because it says right here in verse 9, and we prophesy in part. See, if this is talking about Jesus Christ, then in the church, st there's still prophecy today. But there's no prophecy today, so it's talking about the New Testament, according to James chapter 1, verse 25, where it mentions the perfect law of liberty. That's what's in part. So when he's mentioning as a child, I put away childish things, he just mentioned above prophecy and tongue speaking and knowledge. That was the childish thing that was to be done away with because the church was in its infancy stage. It was just freshly uh, beginning. And these things, let's look at 1 Corinthians 14, verse 22. So we can look at what tongues was for. It says, Wherefore tongues are for a sign, not to them that believe, uh, but to them that believe not. But prophesying, Serve not for them that believe not, but for them which believe. Verse 23, If therefore the whole church be come together into one place, and all speak with tongues, and there come in those that are unlearned or unbelievers, will they not say that you are mad? But if all prophesy, and there come in one that believe not, or one unlearned, he is convinced of all, he is judged of all, and thus are the secrets of his heart made manifest, and so falling down on his face, he will worship God and report that God is in you of a truth. Understand that during this time frame, the church of Christ had prophets. They had those speaking in tongues. They had those who interpret. If there was no interpreter, then the person should stay silent. These were the rules in the church when it first began. There was rules when John the Baptist was baptizing. They had to communicate. You have to be a disciple. You can't just, okay, I want to baptize anybody. So that's been done away with. Bat John's baptism has been done away with. Acts chapter 19. And verse number 5 says, And when they heard this, they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. And when Paul had laid his hands upon them, the Holy Ghost came on them, and they spake with tongues, and then they prophesied. So the scriptures teach us that when that which is perfect has come, that which is in part shall be done away with. It's going to be put asunder. Understand that in Acts chapter number 8, there was a man that was a sorcerer. He desired that same gift. And some of you desire that. You want to see something. The Jews, they wanted to see a sign. Jesus said in adulterous generation, they seek for a sign. And so in Acts chapter 8, verse 17, Then laid they their hands on them, and they received the Holy Ghost, 
when Simon saw that through laying off the apostles' hands, the Holy Ghost was given, he offered them money, saying, Give me also this power, that on whomsoever I lay hands, he may receive the Holy Ghost. Peter said unto him, Thy money perish with thee, because thou hast thought that the gift of God may be purchased with money. This is exactly what Henry was mentioning, considering those who are charging for such a work. Now, this individual named Simon, they already got baptized and had the name of Christ when they were born again in water, grave, and baptism. But what they, what he wanted, he wanted to have that same power to transfer. So what the apostles did, they came to lay their hands on these saints so they can receive the ability to either cast out devils, speak in tongues, prophesy, interpret. God will choose the gift according to who he wants to have what gift. So when it comes to those who try to force you to speak in another tongue after they baptize you, or they tell you to speak in a tongue in the back, and you cannot, some of you either lie and pretend, but the idea is that that's not the will of God, even according to the scriptures. Amen. So we're exposing this detail because the apostles were the only ones that could come to you and transfer the gift, and you could not transfer it to someone else. Also, Acts chapter 10, where God brought down the gift to Cornelius. And in this situation, it's not going to happen today. God is not going to give you the power to speak in tongues today. And the tongues that you speak in here on TV is not a real language. Amen. Be not deceived. Don't be like the Jews who just wanted to see a sign, who wanted their senses uh, tantalized. Look for the truth. The scriptures gave you the truth concerning miracles if they exist today, and they don't. The only way they do exist is when we pray to God, and God answers that prayer, whether to heal of cancer, whether to heal of an infirmity that you have. God is the one that answers still from heaven through prayer, but it's not done through the laying on of hands. It's not done through that conduit because the scriptures give the truth concerning it being done away with. 1 Corinthians chapter 13, 8 and following tells us that when that which is perfect has come, that which is in part is going to be done away with. And it mentions what's in part, prophesying and knowledge. These are the scriptures. You may have been deceived on TV or an uncle, someone you trust and know, concerning this doctrine, but take heed to it. Because what we're doing is rightly dividing the scriptures to show you that it's been done away. And God doesn't like deception or lies so that you can come to the knowledge of the truth so you don't be delusioned or delusional through this teaching. The number calls 281 And one brother's name comes to the mic because he, he has something he wants to deal with, the, the saints and the church of Christ on this yeah. subject. And I'm, I want to give him time to do that. But while he comes to the mic, let me just tell you this, radio listeners. In Acts chapter 3... Peter and John are going up to the temple to pray, and there's a lame man there. Let me tell you what kind of faith. He ain't looking to be healed. He, 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 he believes this is how he's going to be because he's been that most of his life, lame. But you know what happened with him? Even though he didn't have faith to be healed, Peter and John, because they are apostles, because they have the gift, they were able to have this man be lifted up, Acts 3, 7. They took him by the right hand, lifted him up, and get this. It wasn't, uh, it wasn't years later. It wasn't go see the doctor and, and then come back and give us a report. It was immediately his feet and his ankle bones received strength. And he leaped up, stood, and he walked and entered with them into the temple, walking, leaping, and praising God. It wasn't something done in a closet. I want to make sure you get that. It wasn't, okay, you meet us down at, at, at Berry Street, 1234 Berry Street, uh, don't meet me there, beat me there kind of meeting. You know, they did it immediately, and it was known, it was known immediately that this man was healed. Now, remember, Amen. the purpose was to establish the identity of Christ. Because God gave them the miracle to be able to heal this man, it should have caused the people to listen to the message. Now, go to Acts 4. Now, look how Luke talks about this account of this man that was just healed. Because, again, it was not done in private. It was something done in public, and they didn't charge him a dime. Actually, like I said, he was looking for money. Now, but notice in Acts chapter 4 and verse 14, as Luke talks about this particular event. 
and healing the man which was healed, standing with them, they could say nothing against it. We got a lot to say against you false teachers out there because you're always doing it in a corner. See, this was something that Peter and John did was noticeable. But when they had commanded them to go aside out of the council, they conferred among themselves, saying, What shall we do uh, to these men? For that indeed a notable miracle had been done by them is manifest to all them that dwell in Jerusalem, and we cannot deny it. Do you see that? Amen. They could not deny it. We deny everything you claiming to do, my friend, apostle, fake apostles, apostolic church. You do not have the gift. You know what's amazing? I'm, to touch on what Javier just said about the, the Holy Spirit, and I came from a so-called non-denominational church. Let me tell you, that teaches that to prove you have the Holy Spirit, you got to speak in tongues. You know how foolish I was to, to be deceived by that doctrine? Because I didn't know my Bible, but when you look in the Bible, John the Baptist, the Bible tells me he was born with the Spirit. That's right. Born with the Spirit. But when I read my Bible, John 10, 41 tells me that John did no miracles. Isn't that something? Mm. He had the Spirit, John the Baptizer. Uh, John 10, 41 shows us he did no miracle. There's no tongue speaking. There's no raising of the dead of uh, anybody. And this man was born from the Spirit. Do you see the lie? We're hoping your eyes are open to the lie. And it's always the gift of speaking in tongues that these so-called miraculous uh, spiritual people always claim that they have. And let me tell you something, because it's the one that Really, unless you know your Bible, you can't prove. You know, just, just gibberish language, a bunch of foolishness is really all that it is coming out of their mouth. They don't understand it. God don't understand it, which makes it foolishness because you are to speak with the understanding. You are to pray with the understanding. You are to pray with the Spirit, and you are to sing with the Spirit. And so that's a bunch of foolishness that they're pulling off and that I was pulling off at one time. And it's the same foods they're doing in the apostolic church. Now, real quickly on these people talking about you got to have faith in order to be healed. What kind of faith did Eutychus have in Acts 20 when Paul raised him up from the dead? This boy fell asleep while Paul was preaching to him at night. He fell out of the window. Amen. Paul came down there and laid on him. What kind of faith can a dead man have? And Paul raised him from the dead, Acts 28 through 12. What about Dorcas? Paul and then, uh, Peter healed her in Acts chapter 9 and 40. She was dead as a doornail. What kind of faith did she have to have to be raised from the dead? None. And Christ put uh, Malchus' ear back on in Luke twenty two fifty one. 51. Malchus wasn't looking for his ear to be put back on once Peter chopped it off, but Jesus did it. Yeah. So all we're asking is you so-called fake uh, miracle workers, why don't you just call a day and raise somebody from the dead? You know why you don't do that? Because you can't. You cannot do it. You're a liar, and we hope you repent. 281-837-2222. Brother Stephen Ozan. Amen. Thank you, Henry. Thank you, Harvey. You're a wonderful subject to bring forth. Uh, as Henry said, uh, John did no miracle. So what do we learn from that? John 10, 41. We understand that you don't have to do a miracle Amen. in order to be heard as a truthful man. Amen. He baptized all of Judea. Those meaning all who wanted to get baptized. So don't be deceived by these teachers that you must see a miracle. Man. And because it's not necessary. There was a time frame for that, and these brothers have covered those bases very well. If you will look at John chapter 6, and you will be able to see, uh, beginning at verse number 26, that there's a purpose with these particular healings. John 6 and 26, Jesus does not want you to come to him for the same purpose that you're drawing people to you for, to do these false miracles you're doing. Mm -hmm. uh, John chapter 6 and verse uh, 26, this is after Jesus has fed the people. Jesus answered them and said, truly, truly, I say to you, you seek me. Not because you saw the miracles, watch this, because you did eat of the loaves. Come on, feel. Now, here's someone saw miracles done by the Son of God, but they're more interested in a sandwich, a loaf of bread, whatever, than doing what the miracle does is draw you to the Lord. Watch this. Not to be saved by the miracle, but to hear the Word of God. Amen. Those of you that are doing those fake miracles, you don't even teach the Word of God. Amen. When they look at your miracle... It's fake, and they turn to you. You can't even help them spiritually, which is very sad. And so in addition to that, verse 27, Labor not for the meat which perisheth, but for the meat which endureth unto everlasting life, which the Son of Man shall give unto you, for him at God the Father seal. 
So you have to ask yourself, why are you doing miracles anyway? Because you don't even have the word of God. You can't, you don't baptize, you discredit it, you call your wife first lady, you wear titles, uh, holy father, uh, reverend, the, the reverend mother, uh, doctor. It's like you, you violate so much of the text of the law. You use instruments. Acts 17, 24, 25 speaks so against instruments. In fact, I want to read that because, see, Jesus, when you saw his miracle, you could have something done in your life. But you guys can't even, and you women cannot even do anything for the person. Look, one of the easiest shooting fish in a barrel kills that it is is musical instruments. Acts 17, 24. God that made the world, Acts 17, 24. And all things therein, seeing that he is Lord of heaven and earth, dwelleth not in temples made in hand. Neither is worshipped with men's hands. That word hands means instrument. Uh, a thing you've come up with. And where did the trumpet come from? Not heaven, from you. As though he needed anything, seeing give it to all life and breath and all things. If God needed in New Testament Christianity, your instrument, Paul's a liar. And Luke's alive for writing a lie. Because he needs this because man made it. He doesn't. And so you have to understand something. You don't even have anything to offer these precious souls that come to you. You're like those women that made the pillows. The Lord said you make the soul fly to you. And what will you do for them when the soul flies to you, the Lord said? What will you do for them? Nothing. He said, I'll rip the pillows off of you. Off your hands. I'm going to tear it off because you caused my people to perish. Because when they come to you, you can't help them. Look at Matthew 12, if you will. Matthew 12, 24. Now, you know, we're going to have to make people be held accountable. Jesus does bona fide miracles. What happens in Matthew 12, 24? When the Pharisees heard it, they said, This fellow doth cast out devils by the elders while the prince of the devil. Isn't that sad? Jesus explains explicitly in verse 26 if Satan casts out Satan, he's about against himself. I said, it's keeping this thing. If you throw yourself out your house, how you stand? You don't even have ways to live. Any place they look at one more, Acts chapter 8 and verse number 9. Now, here's a guy doing false miracles, sorcery at the hand of Satan, and he's deemed the great power of God. Acts chapter 8, if you will, and uh, look at, if you be so kind, verse number 9. Look at what they think of Simon. But there was a certain man called Simon with before time in the city. You sorcery and bewitched the people of Samaria, giving out that he himself was some great one to whom they gave all he from the least to the greatest, saying, This is the man of the great power of God. How can you call a sorcerer power of God and call the son of God a son of the devil? This is ridiculous. But this is what we have to deal with, and I want you to understand that, audience. You've got to repent, you've got to come to the truth. With either faithful saints of God, Romans 16, 16, the church of Christ salute you. These are false miracles. They are miraculous. They are wonders. They are sorcery. They are power. But nevertheless, they deem, just like today, the guys who are dealing, I don't know if y'all remember Apostle Wilcox. I think his son has taken over. He's uh -huh. dead now. Oh, really? Apostle yeah. Wilcox. Oh, man. Right in here. Oh, man. I forgot where he's at. Man, he lied to people for years. Uh, my grandmother went to him. And we asked her one day, we said, why hasn't he healed your eye? Because she had an eye that had gotten damaged from a stroke. Why hasn't he healed your eye? You don't want your eye healed? The response is just simple. He's healing people. It's just a rhetorical, a red right. button here. He's healing people. But don't problem? you want to be healed? But see, if I challenge him to heal, because I know mine's real from a stroke, mm. she would say. Yeah. He might can. Yeah. See, that's the problem. Yeah. So it doesn't end in the heart. Why? Because I'm a believer. Who questions God? Well, just like we don't question God, they don't question Satan. They don't question his minister. And here's another thing. Look at this. Second Corinthians 11. Uh, the scripture text that Brother Frias chose mm -hmm. was to deal with in which Henry read with true faith. Look at this here. This is incredible. Second Corinthians 11. A verse uh, number 12. But what I do, I do... And they cut off the occasion for them, which is our occasion, that wherein they glory they may be found, even as me. 
but such as so of false apostles, deceitful workers, transforming themselves into the apostles of Christ. So that's how they look like Paul him. Here's the father of it, and no marvel. For well, Satan himself is transformed into an angel of light. Therefore, it is no great thing if his ministers also be transformed to the ministers of righteousness, whose end shall be according to their works. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that's the text. So we understand from reading this and, and comprehending that these people are trying to look like they're holy. Mm -hmm. And as Brother Free has named it, fake miracles. They're fake. It's a wonder. You want, and there's another one in Acts 13, uh, you know, that was in Paul's way. And Paul got tired of him and had him blinded by the power of God and sent him away blind. Because what they do is they come up with, quite, they also, in addition to their miraculous sorcery trash they do, they also come up with statements that mind are mind-boggling. If this is the case, why would God allow me, an evil person, as you say, to do a miracle, and not sharing with his children. See, that's a mind-boggling question. Well, uh, Brother Fritz and y'all read 1 Corinthians 13. The child is now mature. I don't, now, Henry, you got a car. I've seen you drive in several different kinds. You don't go back into the toy car your mom and dad. Yeah, toy car you. And your mother and dad are still living very healthy people. But they don't want you to go back to the toy car, do they? Right. That's what Paul said. Put away child. And Henry drives yeah. a real car, right. not the right. toy car. If we saw him in the toy car, we think he lost it. <laughs> and so, and that's what we think about you all that are doing these fake miracles. We know you don't even know that that has been done away with because the child church is now mature. Amen. So it does the mature thing. It doesn't need that anymore. So that's, that's right. the thing about. And you know, you know to call us if you want to talk and ask us. And be bold. Ask us. You won't hurt us. You won't make us angry by disagreement, but you will cost yourself salvation if you don't ask the questions. Man, God bless you, Christian.